how are you guys doing? Uh, so this is gonna be a full amp unpacking and uh, assembly. The brand is called Fagus. I don't know who's the idiot who actually uh, called their equipment Fagus, but it's F-A-G-U-S and H model. It's a leg extension and curl machine seated leg extension and lying chrome machine for home gym, leg press fit for both one and two inch weight, weight, weight plates. So I purchased that on Amazon. My price was, oh, let me see. Uh, they actually had it on, a, on sale. Uh, MSRP it's $2.99 and I technically paid $212 with tax and they have multiple colors uh, black red and silver uh, so I got a red one the reason why I bought this one is because when I previously did a, a review video for uh, Kepi uh, bench I actually bought two of them one was a bench and the other one was bench with an attachments for arm curls and leg curl and I'm gonna do an update video, but technically the lat curl and arm curl is totally useless. Uh, the engineers just kind of messed up. It, it looks pretty, it looks, um, what do you call it? It's put in together, it's got a you know, bearing, so it actually, so it's a very nice and smooth motion, but as far as the ergonomics, uh, it's, it's, it's technically useless. Okay, so this is a box that I came in, it's actually pretty large. I already got in my set of uh, ratchet, so hopefully that's going to help with the speed. Let me see if I can, I'll put, put it up on the tripod. So what are we going to look at? Let me see. First is how well together this is put, how well together it's packed, and we'll look at the quality of the instructions provided. Okay, got some arms. All right, uh, let me tilt this down. Okay, so I had a, let me get a box cutter. So these are technically universal uh, benches. They've made by uh, one company and just, put a bunch of different brands on these things. So on the box, it doesn't even say brand name or anything, it's just a model number. Okay. All right. So pretty poor packing. Everything is kind of just, like you see, loose. When you buy the, like these equipments, for example, cap here, it's, it's packed pretty well. Um, you could see that somebody actually spent some time. I'm gonna try to position the camera so it's not hitting the door because that has a tendency to overexpose the picture. <coughs> Apologize for my cough, I'm a little bit sick. All right. Oh. All right, let me see. All right, so this is a backrest. <laughs> Fagus, okay, so Fagus H. Okay, so pads are technically not even protected or wrapped in anything, they're just loose. Uh, Where's my box cutter?
instructions. So pretty poor. Um, it's all right. Um, if you're, so, some people are good. Like I love putting these things together. So I usually figure it out. Uh, for some, they might need a help or somebody that's pretty good in assembling things. And like I said, just having your own tools kind of helps. Now, this is a pretty good gauge. The red powder coat is actually pretty nice. And at least the metal parts are wrapped. Cheap wheels and stuff like that, but like I said, I'm I'm not gonna expect everything to be perfect at this price range. These are rubber feet. When these usually fall off, the any machine you buy, so have like a silicone or some sort of adhesive when you put it together, so you glue it on, and they're not gonna fall off on you. I've seen people complain about it, which technically, you know, like I said, it's, it's just, it's a common sense. So you have some per weld. There's some scratches and damages on this particular part. More damages it's over here and dents. That's what you get when it comes to the poor pack. <coughs> Let me see. Okay, sit. Same thing as with these grips. These grips are just kind of put in together. They move around. So uh, putting a little adhesive on these things also, I think it's a pretty good idea. This will be a nice for a motorcycle a handle, handlebar. Okay, and these are your converters. If you have a one inch or two inches, you technically Put this on so you can put Olympic size plates. These are let me see. not necessary, but nice to have clamps to keep the weight. some bushings, clamps for one inch, caps, some sort of a wash, washers and such. everything up. Alright, so 
put the soccer slides. So we got all the parts out. Let's look at, uh, oh, let's open this box and see what kind of goodies we have. Not a lot of screws. Provided some basic wrenches. They are nylon, so so that means uh, they will self-lock, so they're not gonna unscrew on yourself. Okay, and there's technically step one and two. Let me show it to you. Ah. So this is your step one. This is your step two, and this is your final product. Okay, let's see what the Fagus has to offer. Okay, so technically it's gonna start with the frame. All right, so we have our Let's say, uh, give it some balance. So we need two front, uh, kind of a bar that will give us uh, support. Where did I put that sucker? This is the second one. Mm, I just, I just put, oh. I know what I'm looking for. A red one, okay. Okay, so front wheels, that's gonna go, let me see. So either or, so the front wheel, it's gonna go like this. Uh, when you look at a, I'll show you. Like, so usually they either punch them out or I don't know if they cut them out. But see, like, for example, like these squares, as you see, when they punch them out, they're pretty dented. They actually kind of went down. So whatever machines they kind of use, it's like I said, it's, uh, it's, it's fairly cheap. The welds are pretty crappy. Hopefully, it works better than it looks. And we're gonna see how sturdy it is once we put it together. Okay. Let me kick it the balance. Okay. Look down. All right. So this is gonna be gonna go here and we have number two screws M10 by 70 okay two one so we have 65 and 75 M10s so it's 65 uh, and let me see Okay, so you have these carriage bolts, which technically has these, have these little squares. They're gonna go into that square section. 
So these are not what we're interested in because the bottom here, it's only rounded. Okay, then you have your regular ones. So let's, let's arrange them by a kind of length. I see the short ones and the longer ones. So we have 65 and 75. All right. This is a longer one. And then we have a, let me see. Okay. Okay, so we have two extra long ones. And then we have one and we have a couple of shorties. technically bunch of washers so we see okay here here okay so the included washers for everything so that's good as far as the length of these it's uh you know these things are pretty obvious uh because what happens is if it sticks out way too far, then you kind of know that I would call it. So what I'm actually gonna do, I'm gonna reverse this. These, I'm gonna keep the knot on the other side. It looks actually cleaner. And if it protrudes any more than it has to, at least it's not gonna be visible to the eye. And uh, what do you call it? Once I get it done, I'll go over with the camera on each piece. Okay, so looks like they're kind of aligned like shit. So I'm having tr trouble kind of getting it through, but I finally got it. So let's go with two more washers and the nine inch screws. what size they are. Okay, so it doesn't even say what size. So I'm just gonna grab it, one ratchet and I'll just use one of their, one of their uh, wrenches. Okay. The millimeters twelve fourteen seventeen millimeters. That's going to be your size. Let me see if 17 works for both. Yes, and yes, okay. So 17 millimeters is what you're looking for. And like I said, just I'll grab it with a wrench and just use a ratchet to get them tight. Don't, I usually just kind of get them fairly close. I never tighten them all the way. So because once you have everything installed, then what you can do is, uh, and you know, just kind of sit on it, allow it to be to kind of settle, and then tighten everything. Sometimes you get tight everything, and like this might be a little bit, you know, uh, leaning to towards left or right, and stuff. Okay, went a little too far. 
and uh, what do you call it, and, and you might have to kind of get it undone and realign it and then tighten it up. So that just kind of saves time. So your, your, the bar with the legs will go on, the, on this extended arm. And this arm without, uh, without the wheels will go on the other side. So technically, I'm guessing this is where uh, this is where your body goes, this is where you put your butt, and this is where your legs will go. Okay, so same thing as, so most of the time you're gonna use these uh, uh, medium screws where they're actually, that's one, one, two, three, looks like three or four sets of these. And that's what they're gonna be. Hello, little bee. So like previously stated, um, I'm gonna put these bolts through this side and then whatever extra we have, cause like I said, these will stick out a little bit. Like I said, they're gonna be on the inside. So aesthetically, they'll just look a little bit nicer and cleaner. But either or, it will work. No matter if you put the bolt through here or here. And we'll do the same thing. Just gotta kinda get it barely there. wrenches that they give you are pre pretty flimsy usually but like I said for the cost I wouldn't expect them to provide you technically really good tools because uh, let's be realistic like I said it's a $200 equipment not $1,000 equipment and when it comes to little bumps and scratches and dents, as long as it does not interfere with what it's supposed to do, I don't care about it too. It's supposed to work, not look pretty. All right, so now when it comes to the, this side, okay, we have this bar. Okay, so this bar is gonna go here. And these single ones are gonna go on this side. Because that's where you're gonna be laying down. Okay, so let me see if these gonna be 
and uh, so sometimes uh, these come with these little labels on like uh, like S1, whatever it's got. There's got numbers and it tells you which one goes, if it goes to the right or it goes to the left. This is, I'm guessing, correct orientation of these. And let me see number three. And these number threes are technically gonna use two of the longer bolts that are provided because you have to, you have to go through the frame and you technically have two of these plates. So like I said, it's extra five millimeters, which would kind of make sense. All right. All right, so orientation here. When it comes to the orientation, so these will point forward. Put two washers. Somehow figure out a way to hold them together so they don't slide out. Which is kind of, I found out, so there is a lot of extra length on these to actually make sure, one, two, three, so this is 75. Um, Kind of makes no sense to use a 75 on that one, number three, number three. Let me see. Yeah, but that's 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 what they want. Because you have a lot of extra room. You can you can technically put another uh, number three, six. You could put another nut on here. So they should be so five millimeters shorter. I think will be an ideal length for this. But this is the only place where the longer ones are technically considered. So I'm guessing they figured since you're screwing, you have two plates plus the frame, they need a longer screw, but you actually don't. Okay, so let's see. sliding to the back. Well, I'm pretty close on that one. I'll just keep my finger, let me see, close to the nut so it doesn't keep sliding to the back and then off the, off the nut. light adjustment you can kind of make. These I will tighten all the way because like I said they have nothing to do with the frame as far as the alignment.
get a good tight on it but don't try to over tighten it this steel gauge it's decent but it's not the best uh, you will technically you're capable of smashing it or bending it inside all right so we got this one and then okay so let's turn this around Sorry. <clears throat> okay, so this bar goes underneath. Okay. It looks like it goes here. So that means that particular one is, is gonna use those uh, carriage bolts. We'll go in that, in those squares here. And these usually do not need washers. The bottom will. So we'll put the washers on the bottom. And uh, so let me see. Okay, number five. So they don't, so okay, they're showing the screws for the uh, back pads and uh, for the seat number five but they're not showing the carriage screws for the for the arm and just to make sure where it's pointing so this is gonna be pointing so if you look at a like I said this section that's also gonna follow um, the direction of the front bar and point it towards there. Now this plate a little bit, I don't know if you're not gonna see it, but it's a little bit bent. Like I said, it's, it's, it doesn't really matter because we'll straighten it once we're gonna start tightening the, the bolts, but uh, The quality, obviously, when it comes to the inspection, it's fairly poor, but it's to be expected. I've put a lot of these machines and equipment together, so you kind of never know what you get. But like I said, it's you know you can expect too much if you like if you're buying equipment kind of on a budget Once you kind of get go going, you can kind of grab the, the bottom plate and the top plate and kind of align it with the frame to make sure it's one side it's not sticking out further than this, the other side. Like I said, I don't think it matters, but it's just, you know. I think this is sitting flat now. We can actually tighten this too, uh, the legs. Okay, second side. Yep, 
you can already tell that it's starting to pull in. Because like I said, the gauges not too great. But I think it's plenty for what are we tr trying to achieve here. Sucker slip keeps slipping on me. Got them faggots. Something is telling me that wh whoever works for this company, they don't have a DEI department to give it a name like that. All right, so the basic technical framing is done. So we have one more section, which is this one. And this thing's got something sliding in and out. And this one is going on this side. And let me see how it gets mounted. Okay. So I'm guessing there's a bar here that's adjustable for the legs. All right. There's a bracket, I think has to be here somewhere. I see it. I'm kind of looking at it and I don't see, I don't see this. I figured like, do I, am I missing something? All right. So this will doesn't, okay. Okay, how many nuts? So we have one nut and that's it. And um, okay, the rest of them, they already have nuts kind of welded into, into it. And what's crazy about this part is that I think we have to remove this section. to see if there is a, um, ju just to kind of show you what I'm talking about is, uh, as you see, over here, there's a, there's a welded nut, right? So this bracket technically will go here, but there's two holes. Now, I don't know, if behind the second one there's a nut or not okay there's a nut that's welded in here so that means we don't need a we don't need a nut we just need a technically a bolt which let me see which you can't really tell from the the drawing 
see because the drawing just shows you that little bracket and some screws but it even doesn't even tell you what sizes what size of the screws goes here brilliant like actually to kind of see if it's gonna go oh these are super long we need maybe something shorter okay this is too short I'm guessing that's what we have to use. Let me see how many washers we got. All right, so these will be that 65 last, I think, let me see, last two 65 millimeter bolts. Okay, this is a longer one, so this is a 65. This bracket is actually pretty thick gauge, way, way thicker than the whole frame. So sometimes you can give it a go, but then also depends on the weld of these uh, of these uh, nuts uh, that are welded to the frame. All right. Okay, so technically, now this would go here, just like so. And what goes across is that uh, M10 75 millimeter, which is the longest one. So also we need one, two, three and four. So Cappy at least, what I like about the Cappy, like I said, when you, when you have that, uh, let me see, that bracket and, let me see, the moving area where they use actually a bearing and it, it allows for very smooth movement except ergonomics and the position of the pads in your legs technically make it garbage. I think unless you're five feet tall, maybe you might be okay. So this is kind of penious. Oh. To get it through the hole. All right. So this, I wouldn't tighten this too. Too much, leave it a little room so it allows for movement. So I'm not a fan and I'll explain. All right, so this section right here, all right, um, 
so technically where you have your pivot it's just holes the screw is holding it together versus cappy inside this actually had a bearing and uh, that actually gives you a really nice like I said smooth movement let me see all right unlock the screen so I see what all right what I'm actually doing all right so a little bit more dense a couple of scratches all right it's not perfectly centered over here as you see there's a bumper some sort of a hard rubber okie dokie so now let's go in okay we have two, one two three bars so let me see All right, so we have two bars that are black and one silver one. I'm guessing the silver one is gonna go here. This is where you're gonna be putting your, uh, uh, your plates. And it takes a short screw in the back here to lock it in. And it's not this one because it just went through. I'm guessing there's different thicknesses. Okay, that's not it. It will be this one except this one is way too big so let's see if we have a shorter one that's thicker than others I kind of don't see it anything here and nothing over there okay I'll figure it out later Okay, so there's going to be one screw missing, which is, I'll say, not bad. And let's install these suckers right away. So these, they have Allen adjustments. can see them pretty good so they actually included the Allen which is nice so all right it's right in the center now same thing is these are poly uh, plastic I think uh, if you over tight these technically be careful because you will damage these super easy all right, so next would be, the, we have bars. Okay, and we had these silver inserts. So these, as you see, we're going to take that hole and we're going to keep it on the bottom. We slide it in here. And then we're going to slide this bar across it. So it's going to hold it. 
except now this one is technically stuck inside so we might have to tilt there we go it's to slide it forward grab the second bar and insert it All right, so let's kind of turn it a bit. So you see this whole thing. So as you see, this is going to be your adjustment. We have two knobs, okay. Kinda, what I don't kind of get is they should actually put this kind of on uh, underneath instead of having this stick out like this. Maybe somebody can kind of complain that it's hard to reach. So this is going to be ad adjusting. The pads. Oh, okay, so let me see if some of these washers are technically going in, on inside or outside. Okay. Okay, so. Got it. So there's the caps. One, two, three, four. All right, and down here. There's, this kind of makes no sense because when you kind of look at it, they're a little bit too long and they can slide in and out. Um, let me see, I'll show you what I'm, what I'm talking about. Hopefully, if you see it, so there's these caps and these are sliding out. Normally, I don't see anything to actually kind of keep them in place. Unless, uh, what do you call it? Um, if there's gonna be an issue, I'll just cut these on a saw, uh, shorten them so they'll be nice and snug because I technically, like I said, I don't see anything, any bushings or anything that would go around here. Okay, so we have here, we have this, we have that. So now let's install the seat. This is a very tall uh, machine. That was one of the things that I was looking for because if you had a short one, sometimes you can actually, your feet could hit the ground. So this one was much taller than the other choices that they had on Amazon. That's why I picked it up. Um, but I never bothered to go and check the 
cappy when it comes to the height. And I think this one is a little overkill. Uh, it's actually pretty high. Okay, so now we're gonna use this short four bolts. So you have four for the seat and four for the back rest. Okay, snug them. So these, uh, these you can snug them pretty close, just with your fingers. Let's see if I uh, just pop the caps on this side and that side. At least for now. When I, whenever I look at the name of this, this goddamn bench makes me want to laugh. Faggus. All right. Pretty white, faggus. So let's get her here. So we have four screws left over and four washers. Okay. Sometimes you get extra stuff left or nothing from from these guys. These, if you put them on the side, sometimes you can flip it on the back. Might be a little bit easier kind of to get into. Um, when it comes to the holes, instead of just kind of going underneath and trying to eyeball the opening. So I'm kind of wondering how this is one's gonna feel because I'll show you it's kind of it's got the same ergonomics that the cap he has and I'll show you in a minute what I'm talking about that I think just kind of kills the workout when it comes to the range of motion but I might be wrong
All right, so let's get a ratchet. So obviously the inserts are within the seats. So give it, give it a good snug. Try not to over tighten. And these are, this is a different size. So I'll just use the wrench instead of wasting time and look, look for a ratchet. All right. You know, I'm thinking, when you look at a Cappy, for example, so Cappy was $300. Solid bench, like I said, I mean, the Preacher, Preacher Crone and all these things are actually very good quality materials. It's so very solid. This, this is MSRP for 300. So like I said, as much as, you know, like I said, I paid because I bought it on a, well, they, it was a deal on these things. Compared to uh, Cappy, this is a very poorly made bench. The quality just, when you assemble things together, the way they packed it and everything, you could see it's a total, total different category or class of equipment. But then, who cares about a class of equipment if the ergonomics are pretty bad? All right. So we're gonna put the feet. Stop it, come on. These, when you put them on, be careful, because sometimes the way they cut them, they'll leave sharp corners, and I cut myself before pretty deep on these things. So, use caution. We have two of these uh, washers left. Let me see if I can see anything when it comes to these washers. mentioned anywhere Okay, this will be one inch. 
for example, see if I could use this in between. Or as caps. Yeah, I don't see anything what this washer suit kind of do. Because uh, even with the thickness, I don't think it's going to matter when it comes to I have no idea what this thing is supposed to do. All right. All right. So that's how good it's going to get. So this is how it looks. Now this, I'm guessing you can actually do two ways. kind of weird because I would think more that it should be facing forward which is this seat I mean the orientation shows that it's supposed to be pointing that way but to me let's see if it makes sense yeah I think maybe better this way than versus if it would be phoning forward. Okay. So actually feels pretty good. And uh, I'm gonna put a 25 plate and see how it feels. It is flimsy as fuck. It is what it is. I can always make later adjustments if I'll have a problem. Okay. So this will have to be shortened, definitely. Okay. So like somebody mentioned that are uh, like 25 plates so 25 pound plates on each side feel way heavier just for the fact is that that extension arm that's holding the weights creates a, like the way it's pivoted. It's like, a, like I said, imagine if you got to raise your weight here versus all the way extended. So I think for most, like, like I said, I'm 5'11", I can get it lower. All right, it feels pretty good. I think it's gonna do, a, it's gonna do its job pretty fair. Let me show you what I'm talking about when it comes to the capi. I don't know if the light's gonna be good enough here. 
but okay so as you see the distance between here and here is very short right okay so I'm gonna put a 35 pound plate Now, normally, my legs are technically, right now, they're resting on this pad. When I go here, that goes all the way towards my feet. So even when I make adjustments on the height, up and down, it's still not good enough. See, same thing, it slides all the way up because it's too close. Once I load up more weight on it, for me, for the only way I could actually get it, I have to scooch forward. So now the pad sits on my hamstrings and that's the only way that I can get these pads to kind of sit with the adjustability that's here. I have the same issue with uh, doing the hamstrings. Same thing is I have to scooch all the way back where the pads are technically biting into my tights, my quads, and it's just very uncomfortable. And just like I said, I mean, the ergonomics are pretty bad. So the distance wise, it's not far enough. And what I was afraid about this machine is if this pad will be mounted in the front that shifts everything together, that'll be a way better, uh, just way better ergonomics, because that way you can still sit here. These pads will be sitting right here instead of sitting right here. So technically, like to me, this section is useless. Obviously I can remove it, but that's not all. I'll show you another thing. Let me see if I have a, okay. So this goes here. You know what? I'm gonna make a I'm gonna make an update on this video on this machine. I don't. <coughs> this video is already super long, but uh, when it comes to the quality of the machine, obviously, I'll go over. Look, it's a cheap machine, but it feels actually pretty. It, like ergonomically. It feels okay. It feels good. I think you can get a good workout, good extensions. Uh, it's a very tall machine. So if you're five, two, five, you know, it's technically gonna be oop, pretty high up in the air. Like I said, this kind of flimsy. Look, I don't know. These are way too long. So as you see, this is sticking out. there should be some sort of a bushing or something to kind of keep it in place or at least some sort of a spacers and whatever these uh, whatever the uh, those uh, rubber things they include it they're not even wide enough to even put in between but I think for $200 this is a pretty good buy um, I read the reviews it's pretty decent like I said, I mean, yeah, it's like I said, I mean, the build quality, the build quality, it's, it's kind of, you know, sketchy, but if you're sudden enough, this, you know, this is kind of poor. Usually, as you see, the only thing that's holding it together, it's in this one place. There's no there's no other what do you call it look at this even see this bumper so this bumper is not even sitting in the center there you go you have to like manually kind of get it going and there's like no way like i said i mean how straight is it gonna be when it sits on this one particular bracket um 
you know, when it comes to, like I said, if it if it's as long as it's uh, look, I mean, when it comes to the center, I'm gonna control this with with my legs, so it doesn't matter as long as the ergonomics are good. I'm I'm okay with two hundred dollars, but I wouldn't buy. I don't know, like seriously, I'll, 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 I'll make an update video or you know what, if you guys have a question, give, give me a week or two, I'll do a couple of workouts and see how I feel. Um, cause like I said, I don't know if I would buy it again or if not, until I actually use it. Cause I was like, I said, happy with the cappy, but you know, now I would just buy the bench. I wouldn't buy the bench with the arm curl and just leg extension. Cause to me, that thing is garbage. It's like I said, it's, it's horribly engineered. Um, all right, guys, sorry for the long video, uh, but that's how long it takes to kind of put it together. And uh, yeah, $200, okay. Uh, $300 were as far as the MSRP, no fucking way. I wouldn't pay $300 for that. Just for the fact is at least Cappy, like I said, it's a good quality machine. It's just uh, the execution of, of the extension. Like I said, it's, it might be okay if you're f five foot tall, or you're Asian, but I think, like I said, for 5'11", I'm guessing 5'6", five, 5'7", five, it might not be enough just for, for the, just for the fact there's, there's not enough adjustability. Unless you shift the pad, and this is my issue. This pad and that pad is also much forward, but if you switch that pad on Cappy, let's kind of go, go back one more time. If I would switch this pad to right here, so that means I would have to drill the hole, or even better, put uh, this welded area in front, that, that would solve a lot of issue, because that pad will be aligned with the pad that you're doing actually holding, you know, that goes on top of your feet. Uh, that would solve a big problem. But like I said, I'm not gonna be dismounting, well actually, I have uh, I work in the shop, so I could actually have somebody to to weld this section to me. I actually might do it. See if if I'll shift that pad forward. If that's gonna fix an issue, because like I said, since I would rather actually use this one, because even like I said, when you look at it, it also holds in one spot, but there's a bearing over here. This is very nice and tight. Uh, it's mounted in multiple places. Everything is removable. The bench just, like I said, it reeks of quality where the other one reeks of cheapness. That's all that is. All right, guys. Thank you for watching. Sorry for the long video once again, and I'll see you next time.